What's going on, Bulls Nation? Welcome into the CHGO Bulls Podcast. Coming to you from Bulls Fest, Saturday, August 19th. The vibes are immaculate, as the kids say. What's going on, everybody? I'm Peck, joined here by my guys, Big Dave, Bow, BWL Sports, and Will the Go Golly, Will underscore Golly. We are CSU underscore Bulls, and we are pleased to be joined right now by one of your newest Chicago Bulls, a guy that the city of Chicago knows very well, yeah. the one and only Javon Carter. Yeah. Javon, thanks for joining us, man. How are you? Welcome to the show, man. Uh, first and foremost, welcome back home to the city of Chicago. Obviously, free agency is always a, a fascinating part of the NBA calendar. Was there a part of you that always felt like you would at some point put on that Bulls jersey? What was that free agency process like for you this summer? Um, I can't say it's something that I've always felt, but it's something that I've always wanted. Mm. You know, I've always wanted to be a Bull. That's, it was the only thing I've ever dreamed of. And, you know, um, talking to my agent, Mark Bartlestein, when he when he called me saying that the Bulls was a possibility, it was, it was hard for me to think that I could go anywhere else. Mm. You know, so all it had to do was make sense, and I was all on board. Mm. Were there a lot of teams after you up for the free agency period, but when you heard the Bulls were available, you just like, that's it? <laughs> Uh, nah, nah, it wasn't like that was it. It was just, you know, it's business, you know, so I just had to make a make a good business decision. And luckily, the Chicago Bulls came with it. Mm. Um, what was sort of their pitch to you? I mean, they lost Lonzo Ball a couple of years ago. He hasn't been able to play kind of a hole at that point guard position. What, what was kind of their message to you in terms of what you could help bring to the team in your role here? Oh, uh, just coming in and being myself, you know, um, just bringing what I have. Uh, talking to everybody, it seems like they they love what I bring to the to the game of basketball, and it was something that they felt like they were missing. So I'm just really just coming in, just being myself, and seeing seeing how I play out. You've only been back home for a few months now, and you've already put in some work. Bulls fans obviously love to see members of the Bulls, uh, players, members of the organization out at events like Bulls Fest, and they appreciate that connection with the players. But you've taken it a step further, like some NBA players do, starting the Treadmill Mentality Academy camp that you did this summer. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Um, it's just something I wanted to know, uh, get started, you know. Uh, Treadmill mentality is something that I really stand on. You know, it's, it's who I am. It, to me, it's more than a phrase. You know, it's a lifestyle that I live by. Um, just, just trying to be a face of the kids, letting them know that anything is possible. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't one of those kids growing up with, with NBA just floating all over, over the, over my name. You know what I'm saying? If you hear my name, you're not just thinking, oh, he's going to the NBA. You know, it was just a lot of work I had to put in, and it's like just. That's just that treadmill. Just no matter what, just keep going. You know, the treadmill not gonna turn it off until you turn it off. So you know, just mm. just keep going. Damn. And so that's a basketball camp for youth, kind of like skill mm -hmm. stuff. Is that, yeah. is that right? Yeah. Just yeah. Try to try to get them, teach them the fundamentals of the game. You know, and and just more so. It's, it's really more than basketball. You know, I'm I'm looking at it more than basketball because the things that you learn in basketball can help you out through life. You know, and w whatever field you plan on going in. So. Just coming to the Treadmill Mentality Academy, yes, you're going to learn basketball, but you're going to also learn a whole lot of life, life, life learning things. Mm. Your reputation, as far as we know you, is a guy that's, you know, got that bulldog mentality, you know, that defender, you know, that spot-up shooter. What can you tell uh, to Bulls fans out there who probably haven't seen your game, what you're going to bring to the table for them this year? That's funny. I get that question a lot. Yes, sir. You know, uh, every time I go to a new team, they ask me, what do I want to tell the fans? Uh... Or, or, or who I am and what I bring, and I don't really like to do that. Mm. You know, I'm a I'm a guy who I just want you to come and you show up and you give your opinion mm. and you go tell everybody else what you saw. Mm. I like that. Have you had a chance yet to talk with any of the guys, work out with any of the guys over the summer, and uh, any first impressions of your new teammates? Uh, no, I haven't really got a chance to talk to them much, just through like group text, but like not anybody like individual one on one. But, I mean, my impression is just, you know, playing with a group of guys who want to win, you know, right there, on, right there on that edge of becoming whatever we want to become. You have know been, what I'm saying? Have you been able to put that jersey on yet? Like, nope. has that history yet? Nope, I ain't been able to do man. that yet. I'm like, nope. I'm excited. I ain't had that feeling yet. I'm ready, man. Excited for that, man. I ain't like, had that feeling yet. I can't wait for it, neither. Yeah, yeah man. Somebody who's ready right? for media day instead of not wanting to go to media day, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's going to be dope, man. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, you know that there are so many people in the history of Bulls basketball who grew up in and around Chicago who then go on to put on a jersey, and particularly at that point guard position, you know, Derrick Rose, Io just 
Sumu, who re-signed to come back and stay with the team. What, I, I mean, what, what does that signify to you as somebody who grew up probably watching Bulls games when you were a kid and now saying, hey, I'm and whether or not you're part of those starting line of introductions, I'm guessing at least for a handful of games this upcoming season you will be, to hear your name and, and maybe if Tim Sinclair gives you the from Chicago, mm. and, and what, what does that mean to you? Oh, uh, man, I've, I've dreamed of that moment for my whole life. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, ever since I became a basketball fan growing up, watching the old Michael Jordan games, yes, you sir. know what I'm saying? They playing his seasons throughout the year like like it's live. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So just I can't I can't wait for that moment. I can't even really put that into words. Mm -hmm. Like what what that could potentially feel like. You know what I'm saying? I really don't even know. I, you would have to ask me that question after I had that experience. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I'm definitely looking forward to it for sure. Word, word. It's kind of going to be kind of like an out-of-body experience, yeah. I'm sure, man. Yeah, I just, I just want to enjoy the moment. Yeah, that's going to be crazy, man. Do, do you have any individual goals or any team goals for the season ahead? Obviously, the Bulls were a playoff team two seasons ago. Couldn't quite make it out of the play in this past season. You're somebody with plenty of playoff experience yourself. What, what do you see as far as this team and what you guys can accomplish this upcoming season I mean I feel like we're one of those teams that's right in the middle you know uh, we can be one of those teams that fall off or we can be one of those teams that become something great mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying and, and my my look on it is why not why not go be something great mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying put that work in and who knows what we can become you uh, you gonna go win the three point contest? Does that happen yet? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I might get out there. I don't know. We'll see. Mm. Right on, uh, Javon. We appreciate the time, man. I know you got a lot to do, a lot of ground to cover today. Thank you so much for spending some of it with us, and uh, all the best to you. Good luck this season, and uh, we're happy to have you back here in Chicago. Right, appreciate y'all for having me. Appreciate you. Right on. Come on. Yep. One of your newest Chicago Thank Bulls, Javon Carter. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. We got plenty more coming up here at CHGO Bulls. We're going to talk with uh, Bulls VP of Marketing, Dan Moriarty, to tell us more about this year' event called Bulls Fest. We're also going to be talking with Bulls General Manager Mark Eversley a little later on in the afternoon. Keep it locked right here because this is awesome. This is awesome, bro. How fun is this, guys? CHGO Bulls, baby. <laughs> Bulls Fest, we here. Well, while we got a little bit of time between Javon Carter and uh, Mr. Moriarty, why don't we take that opportunity, Dave, to uh, share with our listeners and viewers, some of the people who make CHGO possible are wonderful friends and sponsors. Well, wow. You know what? Your segues is just otherworldly hey, sometimes. Hey, man. I've man. been off for a week. You I've, can I've wait can to I, do can this. Can I just say before we get into the ads that yes. multiple people have graciously come up and said what's up, uh -huh. tell us they, they love the show, they watch, yeah. but every single one of them, the first thing they say is, we don't skip ad reads on the show. <laughs> we love Big Dave's ad reads. Give the people what they want. There's a reason well, for that, Will. There's a reason. Well, see, I, could, I didn't hear you because I'm reading this text message from baby joey oh that's right he's hitting me up you know what i mean he said he's here i don't know where he is man but he said he said matt look to your left <laughs> wait oh he said psych sorry oh, he just got you man that's yeah. sneaky little sneaky. run that's how baby joey do man damn you don't understand why people do this stuff man that and baby joey don't never understood either why why are these glasses so expensive? Why you got to pay so much to look so damn cool? Nobody gets it. Baby Joey don't get it. Will don't get it. I don't get it. Matt don't get it. The fans don't get it. Never got Nobody it. gets it. Never got it. I got it. Jamal don't understand. Uh -uh. Why you got to pay so much money? They don't understand, y'all. But Shady Rays is going to do something about that because they're an independent sunglasses company. Offers that world-class product that's just as good as any expensive pair you've ever put on your sexy face. The durable frames, the extreme clear optics for your outdoor. And that's this man that's over here Proven your indoor and does, this, does this count as indoor because we're in a tent? Yes, this is indoor. Okay, no, no, say, you're indoor. That's you outdoor. Said for your indoor and as we are now proving mm -hmm. for a very rare occasion, outdoor. Mm, baby Joey didn't want me to do that. Okay, and so I'm, I'm just rolling He's with him, man. Very particular. He's, he is a super picky baby. That's how he rolls, bro. But that's how he rolls. He's not like that. He about that life, but. He did tell me about the Matt Peck loss and broken replacements plan. Oh, good. Oh, he said when you toss that hat Very and it go feature. flying, because you're going to do that. <laughs> Look, Lawrence got scared. Dude, Lawrence is right in the throw zone. <laughs> he got a little scared. <laughs> he got a little upset. But let's say he threw that, glasses on that hat, they would go splat. All of that rhymed. Guess what would happen? He'd be sad. But then he would remember. He could put them in an envelope, send them back to Shady Rays. They sent them back a brand new pair 
for free. But ow! And let's say you're walking around today and you see something in the distance and you say, damn, who is that handsome gentleman there wearing some damn shady rags? Well, that's got to be the goat. <laughs> got to be the goat. And you would be correct. And you would say, damn, I could look cool just like that. <laughs> well, two things. One, no. But two, you can get the glasses that he got or get you another pair, send them back to Shady Rays, and as long as you do it within 30 days, guess what? It's going to be for free. You won't have to pay nothing. No charge to y'all. It'll be cool, man. So, exclusively for the listeners out there, Shady Rays giving away the best deal of the season. Go to ShadyRays.com. Use the promo code CHGO. Get yourself 50% off of two plus pairs of premium polarized shades. What they got to do, Goat? Try it for yourself. Oh, oh, with the assist. The shades that are rated five that stars. But over 250,000 people because the Shady Rays, y'all, with a raise are just oh so shit. Oh, so damn shady. A lot has changed since you've been gone. <laughs> Before we get into the next one, shout out to the gentleman in front wearing the King of the Four C. Right, hey, hey, the King of the Four C shirt. Love to see, see it. Love to see it. That's, uh, to see that's it. a nice item. I thought about wearing my King of the Four shirt today, but mm-hmm. then I was like, I'm just going to wear something that says CHGO. Smart man. You was just happy to be Company out Company man. Oh, dude, I'm a, I'm a free man. <laughs> I'm a free man. <laughs> He's excited. Uh, today's show is also presented by our friends at Circle K, who we are mm-hmm. so excited to be partners and friends with. Check out your nearest local Circle K for the best coffees, beers, and snacks beers? selection, plus that premium gasolina to make your car car go go. Um, we were talking about uh, on yesterday's HQ, Dave, yes. that uh, Will and Mark knew for sure that when I went out to Starve Rock last weekend uh-huh. for a little camping weekend with some buddies, mm-hmm. that the first thing I would do is stop at my neighborhood Circle K to load up on supplies. I Me, mean, obviously. And that's exactly what I did. Yeah, yeah. And I told Will I've been I've been really digging the sugar free Red Bulls recently yeah. if you want the kick but you don't want the sugar crash. Yeah. So I got some sugar free Red Bulls. I got some pepperoni pizza flavor combos. Oh. I filled my tank of my sweet precious car oh. and I was on my merry way fully ready for the weekend. Nice. You know why wow. I was fully ready? Because I stopped at Circle K. <laughs> oh my goodness. Find your nearest Circle K in your neighborhood and get everything you need for your next road trip or just passing through running some errands to get your day done. Thanks mm. Circle K for Thank being you. our friends and for having everything you need. Mm. Okay. Mm. Circles. Uh, so while we uh, hang out here for a minute, uh, waiting for Mr. Dan Moriarty, Bulls mm. VP of Marketing, to mm. tell us a little bit more about this Bulls Fest. Guys, just walking around, looking around. We've been here for a couple hours now before uh, popping up our, our CHGO tent here to do our, our content. Yeah. What What's the first thing that has struck you, Dave, about what this event is and what it looks like? Because we sadly did not attend last year. Yeah, this is yeah, our yeah. first Bulls Fest. Yeah. What, right. what is your first impression of this? It's hot. It's hot. Hey, well, that's that's one. What Lawrence got a mic? What? Lawrence got a mic. Yeah. I was like, how did I hear him so hey, clear? Who gave Lawrence a say, microphone? He, had, he was setting up a microphone yeah, during you that. Know, <laughs> you know I was, and now I, now I'm on camera too because you know I gotta be on oh, camera. Oh Jesus! What's up, y'all? He's gotta, gotta be, be him. Hi, Lawrence. I've gotta I be mean, me. You know what? That's my fault. Shout out, shout out to Lawrence. I did not include Lawrence's introduction while we were getting started yeah. with Javon earlier. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. was focused. Our man. pal and producer, executive producer, CSO Lawrence. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm not on. I'm sort of on camera back here, and I'm also on camera right here. So. Two I'm for one. Over. Yeah. Give Two me, Lawrence's give me are better than one. Fascinating for the podcast listeners out there. Oh, really their minds are really blown. Is. All right, I'll get out of the way. <laughs> I just want you to know that I'm here. Just we, want you to know I'm here. Thank we you. We very man. much know and appreciate that you're here. And we appreciate that very, can very I, uh, much. Can I say something real quick Please about do. what Javon just said? You yeah. can. So he said something really interesting to me, which was like, we're one of those teams in the middle, and we can either go back yeah. or we can go forward. And he yeah. said, why not? Why can't we go for it? Mm-hmm. And that just gave me Derrick Rose. Why, Dude, why I was can't that say, be the MVP? Why can't I be the MVP of the league? Yep. Those are very much Thought similar vibes. Thing. I love how he how excited he was. You saw the excitement on his face when you know I was telling him what's it gonna be like to put that jersey on. You just saw what it means to him, man. Like you, when you can't put that kind of stuff into words, this is kind of what Bulls Fest is. Like mm-hmm. that kind of thing, that kind of fandom and that kind of love for this team. And then you get to play for that team that you love like that. Bro, I can't even, you're right, I can't even put it in words, so I can't even imagine. Imagine what he's feeling, man. That's something special. That'll be the first question I ask him if he gets a start this year yeah. Yeah. after the game. You told us to ask you after yeah. our <laughs> podcast. <laughs> All right, give me a good answer. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's cool to see somebody who is that excited 
because when he said like no I haven't even put on a Bulls jersey yet yeah. and like there was so much eagerness and happy anticipation in, mm-hmm. in his face and in his voice you could easily tell how much it will mean to him the yeah. first time he does put on that Bulls jersey because honestly all of us who grew up in and around Chicago who have been Bulls fans since we were kids we all have that dream mm-hmm. when we're little yeah. I, I want to I want to play for the Chicago Bulls yeah. a very select few who are talented and have the work ethic right. as Javon does actually make it there the rest of us just get to live vicariously through them right. when they happen to be those hometown kids who end up playing for the Bulls I do think at some point I will ask Tim Sinclair to just for me one time maybe he'll record it maybe not just do the Bulls intro and then say from Chicago Will Gottlieb just oh, to see how it feels just one time just to see how it like feels like over the Madhouse PA system during yeah. the real starting lineups of course not during the real starting yeah. lineups <laughs> you know he got well, that kind what of pool. do you mean he's he talking about like before the game before the game you know what I mean on the oh. off maybe day maybe next time he joins us on the show yeah 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 just do a little recording just from so I can play Chicago. it back to myself yeah, yeah. yeah you know when I'm feeling down did, or something I actually did I tell you guys I saw Tim Sinclair at that giant uh, sports collectors convention we did out in Rosemont a couple weeks ago you did? Oh, no, so, I didn't see but him. like I saw him from 150 yard distance oh okay and there were 200,000 humans in between us <laughs> and we were trying to find our way to our station and I was like Achoo! oh no it's not worth it dude and even but if talk- you're listening Tim hi I saw you at the sports convention but dude even talking about just looking out here and watching Javon you know play with the kids right now you know what I mean showing a couple moves couple of defensive moves and things like that like that's the kind of stuff we're talking about you know with the Bulls Fest and just being somebody who's from here and what this means to you and mm-hmm. the fact he can come out here and do this and just look at it man and just look how excited they are man all these kids out here playing with a Chicago it's, Bulls player you know how this got to feel bro I that's mean crazy. It's, it, it reminds me of sports camps that I went to when I was a kid yeah whether it be basketball soccer baseball it's just a bunch of kids out playing a sport and just super happy to be playing a sport yeah man this is some cool shit bro. I I so badly want to get out there and launch a few jump shots right now. Is that allowed? Can we do that? Has the three-point contest already taken place? Yeah, Will's been asking that question for a minute. I've been itching. He's been itching, man. You know, the trigger finger is I've been itching to itchy. embarrass myself in the front of all these people. The trigger finger is itchy. Wait, are you the one who told us uh, a little while ago that last year's Bulls Fest three-point contest was won by a 12-year-old? I did hear that <laughs> from uh, somebody... Is the Ooh. defending champ still here? Are I don't, they going to defend I don't know. their crown? I, I, mean, I don't even I know if it started back. yet, but I, I would imagine they're they're coming back for the crown. Yeah, I would be back for the crown. Maybe, Are you kidding? Maybe, you know. I'd be here. You look like like out you to have music. You know, do some scouting. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm guessing because this is like a, a family-friendly event that I can't gamble on who wins the, <laughs> the children's three-point We contest. can have a, uh, you know, <laughs> way, friendly like, wager. Just a little side bet. Yeah, just a little something. You know, kid with the ponytails. Go kill him out here, dog. We can have a little something. I like that. Know what I mean? Yeah. All right. Uh, it appears that uh, our next guest, uh, Dan Moriarty, is ready to join us. Let's so do. let's welcome him into hey, the set. Do. And uh, how you doing, Dan? How you doing, hey, Dan? Thanks for Matt, joining nice us. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Nice Grab to meet a you. matching chair hat over there. Here. Have a seat. Have a seat. <laughs> VP of marketing for your Chicago Bulls, Mr. Dan Moriarty. Dan, hey, welcome to the show. Hey, 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 what's up, guys? Nice to meet you. Big two. Uh, so, how, how, just how much of this is your brainchild? Like, uh, obviously, so much uh, undertaking goes into a, an event this big. This is now our your second year doing second. Bulls Fest. Have you just been a giant ball of stress? You just told us before we went on on uh, air that you get, just got back from vacation. Let's just go back. So it's an vacation. oddly timed vacation to get home <laughs> right before an event this big. So, definitely not my brainchild. Organizational brainchild. Um, I'm sure you guys know we used to do shoot the ball back yeah, in right. the nineties. Yeah. Um, I've been with the Bulls about seven years. We've been talking about bringing it back for five of those years. And then post-COVID, I think there really was that energy of people wanting to do things together again and communal events. Um, so we managed to make it happen last year. Last year, I was a much bigger stress ball because it was the first year we were doing it. Yeah. Realized we can do this stuff. And now this year, we've got many, many more capable people than me that are actually making <laughs> this happen, which is how I was able to go on vacation for the last two weeks and not what, be a complete mess. What's the feeling like for you when you get to come out here and you see, you know, kind of something that you've worked on for so long talked about for so long come to fruition like this like what's your feeling when you see these things it's amazing I mean yeah. it, it, it sounds almost semi-emotional but I think we talk a lot about how strong the Bulls fan base is and this sense of community and like, like the reason you guys do what you do is because yeah. of the community that sits behind you and it's rare for us to have a chance to bring people together outside of game days and it's something that we talk a lot and we're going to be trying to do a lot more moving forwards mm-hmm. but being able to do this in Chicago in the middle of August you know just walking around I didn't get. I got back at 2 a.m. last night. Oh my my alarm went off at 6:30 this morning. Um, someone asked me, "Are you tired?" And I was like, "No, there's so much energy here. Like you just yeah. walk around, and it's not just the weather. The people, everyone's smiling. Whether they're playing basketball, doing clinics, watching 
FIBA, meeting players, playing on the hoop bus, listening to podcasts, whatever it may be. Mm-hmm. It's just a really good energy here, and that makes it really nice to kind of walk around and see all of this. Right so on. for the people that are not here, uh, or maybe are just hearing about it, there are tens, maybe hundreds of courts in front of us. There's a bunch more behind us. There's food trucks. Uh, there's a ton going on here. A tournament, dunk contest, three-point contest. Yep. So much is going on. What goes into like getting one of these events <laughs> off the ground? Because it seems like, I know you said this is the second year, it's a little bit easier, but still feels like quite a, a lift. It's an undertaking, that's for sure. Um, you know, I think it's it's funny because when the season's going on, this feels like a long way away mentally for us. Mm-hmm. But around kind of January, February, we really started committing to the planning for this year. Um, and it's been, you know, probably six months of serious work for a handful of people. And mm-hmm. then, you know, six weeks serious work for probably 50, 60 odd people. Mm-hmm. Um, but it really is. I mean, again, for those that aren't here, there really is something for everyone. We've tried to make this a celebration of basketball and the Bulls. And so that means everything from you know, the ability to play basketball, the ability to watch basketball, the ability to meet legends, the ability to meet players. I don't know if you guys have checked out the art show, but the art show. No, not yet. Yeah, yeah. Art show will. The atrium's amazing. Uh, there's custom Bulls Fest jerseys, hats, T-shirts food trucks as you say mm-hmm. uh, we've got right now I just walked past Nate Robinson is guest refereeing oh my god 13 year old girls wow. guys. That's right, right behind <laughs> okay. you guys oh man wow. and that's not even on the can, agenda can it's you just tell him to come find our CHGO <laughs> Bulls and do a quick chat just a real I want to talk to him about, about game four against Brooklyn in that's 2013 yep. I've been meaning to talk to him about that my whole life whole just life. mostly to yep. say thank you because right. holy geez that was awesome <laughs> uh, so I mean I know we're only about halfway through day one of two day Bulls Fest but talking about the, the huge huge undertaking of inventing this out of thin air last year and now this being year two. Is there anything you've noticed or learned yet so far halfway through day one? And and how do you see this event maybe evolving next year and and beyond? I mean, that's honestly mostly what we're doing today is walking around, comparing notes, what's working, what's not. Mm. I think we're very happy with um, everything that's happening from a basketball perspective. You know, we we had almost three times the number of teams sign up this year as we had last Mm. year. We were a bit worried about that's a lot of growth year over year when you're kind of 3xing the number of teams. Uh, but this we think has gone really well. We think with the FIBA and elite teams that are behind us on the center courts, just figuring out how we can make that more of a spectator element for people to kind of sit down and watch. So can we get like MCs? Can we get bigger scoreboards? Because we've realized if you're watching, it's great. We had a, a, an influencer team playing earlier. We probably had 500 people gathered around a court. No one knew what the score is. So everyone's going <laughs> nuts, but there's a small like person in the corner flipping the score chart score. over. <laughs> And no one knows what's going on. So just how can we kind of level that up a little bit? Um, So yeah, plenty kind of running through our minds for how do we make this better moving forwards. But also, biggest thing we learned last year was talking to fans, right? Like walking around, looking at Twitter, looking at Instagram. We see everything that people put out and we're we're reacting to that and learning from it. And that's why last year we had a really big, if you guys don't think came last year, we had a big music component last year. We dropped that this year because fans were just, that wasn't what they wanted. They wanted the basketball, they wanted the Bulls brand. Right. Us throwing a music festival wasn't quite what they were after. And so we dropped that this year and really doubled down again on on basketball and brand and how do we do something that celebrates both of those. So what has the early feedback been? And I know it's only been half a day. Uh, my feedback, just real quick, is that yeah. these shirts are amazing. Oh, I think, the I think that they should the turn them into jerseys. Yeah, oh, all city they look like I don't know who to talk to about that. Like basketball camp in the early nineties. Yeah. 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 That's, that's what it reminds so me of. Sick. I mean, good, good summer vibes. Yeah. Right? yeah, I'm getting a little draws in Petrovic of the Nets personally. Oh, oh yeah, ooh. okay, ooh. I can see that. Ooh. Shout yeah. out! Shout I'll, yeah. I'll pass this along as jerseys. to the creative services team that design all those. But I don't know. Have you guys seen the jerseys that we have? Yeah, yeah, definitely saw them. Yeah. Yeah, nice as well, but not quite the same time. Yeah. Though, guys. <laughs> yeah. What's your favorite part of? Do you have a favorite part of this Bulls Fest right now? Yeah, you know, I, I was asked that earlier. I don't think I'll know my favorite part until the end. Mm. Um, so we had we had so many stories last year that we wouldn't have guessed were my favorite part. So one of them actually was um, they just the Athletic just wrote an article talking about this tweet that was a dad put up a picture and it was his son playing basketball against another kid he just met, mm-hmm. um, and he said, you know, this was what Bulls Fest was all about, and like, that's a really small moment, but it's stuck in my mind that you have two Bulls fans meeting, playing basketball in the middle of summer in Chicago. There's something beautiful about that. Mm-hmm. Um, I also saw a tweet last year, someone saying that she always wanted to go to Bulls games but could never find people to go with. Mm-hmm. She came last year and met a bunch of people that now she goes to games with. Wow. There's those sorts of elements, right? There's obviously the big stuff like the slam dunk tournament's going to be great. I don't know if you guys saw the three-point contest we had. I was wondering if that had we, already happened yet. We invited the kid. The, a kid won it last year. Yeah, I, I heard like about this. Years old. We invited I him hope, back uh, to, I defend, hope they're scouting him. He defended his title. He won it again. <laughs> he won, he won it again. 
Jim. Be four. Wow. Wow. Unbelievable. Com- wow. Comfortably as well. Give that kidding. young wow. man a 10 day contract and then we'll see. <laughs> maybe we can go from there. I was thinking two way. Yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, you know, make uh, make Adama Sanogo earn that two way contract. <laughs> <laughs> but it will be something like that that pops again this year that like something will happen and it will just be a great moment. And that's, again, the, the thing we get excited about here is bringing Bulls fans together. Right. Like, yeah. The yeah. magic that happens when you do that. And so, yeah. And That'll being be on the CHGO bit. Bulls podcast. Well, of course, and, of course. And this, I've got to say, been a big fan for a long time. So oh, so thank, that, you. That thank was, you. Oh, I, of us or the Bulls? Uh, <laughs> oh, of the, of the Bulls for longer. Okay. I, I used to watch the Outsiders back in the day. Oh, hey. and, and a lot of people hey, enjoyed it. That, that was, was going to be my next question for you is, like, did you have any ties to Bulls fandom from your youth or where did you hail from? Have you become a Bulls fan since taking on this job? Yeah. Because, uh, you know, CHGO is, is very much fan-centric as far as our coverage. It's a new way of doing media. And, uh, you know, we all kind of started as Bulls fans who then wanted to just talk about the Bulls yeah. with other Bulls fans yeah. and provide them content. So how did your background involve basketball fandom, Bulls fandom, and now doing what you do? Yeah, so, uh, so I've been with the Bulls seven years. My background's all in marketing. Uh, mm. I was hired for that, not for my basketball knowledge. Right. Um, originally from the UK. So grew up knowing a bit about basketball, but not a ton. Massive soccer fan. Um, when the Bulls were looking for my role originally, they were like, what we care about is people that understand fans. Them, right, mm-hmm. like people that can talk the language, but not necessarily need to know pools and basketball. Right. Um, but once you start working here, I mean, it's it's you almost get indoctrinated into it. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, it's mm-hmm. funny. Like I, so I moved here in 2010, so it was right as kind of the rose stuff was really starting to yeah, take yeah, off. Yeah. Um, so became a fan, but definitely nowhere near the level right. I am now. Like, I'm now at the point where driving in and out from work, I'll put podcasts on and I'm listening to yeah. NBA podcasts, Bulls podcasts. Yeah. yeah. And, and right, it's it's awesome that that coincidentally happened to be when you found your way to. Chicago because speaking as someone who grew up uh, adoring those championship dynasty teams of the 90s and then you know moved back to Chicago after college in that early 2010 you know uh, window of time I had not seen the city vibe about being Bulls fans since the dynasty ended mm. as I did when those Derek and Joakim and Luol teams started to really make a push for it like, yeah. as I'm sure in your experience even the Bulls becoming a playoff team again uh, two seasons ago, when the Bulls are good yeah. and the city it's, it's a different yeah. experience altogether. Yeah. I mean, look, we can do this yeah. today, right? Imagine right. imagine if this, you get to the point where we're pushing the back end of the playoffs, pushing the finals. Like, we know this city is going to be electric. Mm, can't um, wait. But in the meantime, you know, we're doing everything that we can to make sure that being a Bulls fan still feels really special. Mm. And still kind of, you know, honor the uh, energy that everyone brings to everything that we do. You, you kind of touched on it a bit ago, but I wanted to, because I didn't know about this, Dave and uh, one of our other coworkers were just telling me about Shoot the Bull yep. and sort of this being maybe an evolution of that. Yep. Uh, just for you know, people like me who didn't really know about it, what was that event and how have you kind of taken what you've learned from that and turned it into what we have here at yeah. Fest? So it's actually been really hard to find out too much about Shoot the Ball. It's, it's almost like this mystical thing that everyone knows <laughs> yeah. happened. But we don't have many any people left that worked at back then. Um, what I do know, I found, a, we used to put out a media guide every, or we still put out a media guide, but we used to put out this old media guide that had a preview of Shoot the Ball from like 99 or something silly. It was a 3,000 team tournament. So we're mm-hmm. at about 450 teams yeah, today, and this feels big. Yeah. It was a 3,000 team tournament mm-hmm. where teams didn't register beforehand. They right. showed up, and on the day of, they registered. And then somehow, I, again, this is pre cell phones, right? Like, they managed to make it double elimination. So lose two games and you're out. They would shut down Grant Park. So it was, it was in the middle of downtown. Yeah. Um, you'd have teams flying in from all over the world. But it really was, from what I understand, it really was just the basketball tournament. There wasn't anything else going on and so when we were looking at bringing it back we really asked ourselves like we don't want this to just feel like someone is putting on a basketball tournament we want it to feel like the Bulls are putting on a basketball tournament so that's where we asked ourselves okay what do we think the Bulls brand really stands for so that's why we have the art fair that's why we have the retail elements that's why we have the youth clinics we've got I don't know if you guys have walked around but we've got two community groups at the back on courts so we've got um, a wheelchair basketball group in the back right over there and we've got uh, hoops in the hood which is a, a, a basketball tournament that happens between neighborhoods and I think high school in different neighborhoods across the city they're hosting their finals here today so they've had, mm. they've had this tournament that's been running they've come here to celebrate so it really was the evolution I think was 
probably reflective of what's happened to basketball in general, right? Where it's gone from just being a sport into being really this cultural element as yeah. well. And so we're really looking at how do we bring the cultural side of the balls to life around the three-on-three -three tournament too. It's amazing. Uh, just about out of time, last one for you. You know, we were talking about just how much of a collective effort it is to launch an event with this scope. Is there anybody that you want to give some love to, give a shout out to, who's maybe a behind the scenes hero of making this all happen? Oh yeah, so there's a million people, so I'm not gonna name everyone, but there's, <laughs> there's two in particular. So uh, a lady on my team called Kayla and a lady on another team called Zyda. Those two have, um, they're the ones when I said a handful of people have been working hard for six months on this. Mm -hmm. They're the two that have been doing that. I don't think the pair of them have slept for the last <laughs> month. Um, judging by their Instagram late night posts at least. Um, and every time I see them, they're just both stress balls today. And I'm like, guys, this is going well. And they're, <laughs> they're seeing all of the little things that aren't quite connecting. So those right. two are definitely the two that deserve the biggest shout outs. Uh, but as I said, there's about 50 to 60 people across the organization that have, that have worked hard to make this happen. Mm -hmm. But those two are the two where if they, if they took a week off, this wouldn't have happened. So <laughs> well, massive shout out to the pair of them. Right. Excellent. Everybody on your team, everybody in the Bulls who has made this happen, kudos. Because this is really, truly an amazing truly. thing that you all yeah. have, have put together for Bulls fans. Uh, one more time, give it up for Dan Moriarty, Bulls VP of Marketing. Thank you so much for joining us, man. Thank you for uh, for the love and uh, good luck. We'll let you get back to work. Awesome. Uh, Thank you, guys. Keep Have it up. up. This is awesome. Thank See you for being here. Take it easy. We'll take a quick break here. And then on deck, Bulls GM Mark Eversley will join us later on in the show. See show Bulls from Bulls Fest. How awesome is this? Thanks How again, awesome Dan. Is this, man. You know what makes more awesome, Matt? What's that? Beer. Oh, I love beer. There was like no, I couldn't find a goose eye on the time. <laughs> no, I'm listening. You should have. No, she should have came and told me. I was saying, listen, I was going to let you talk. Go on, Emma. That was Emma, man. She runs our social media over here. No, come talk about it. Come talk. I want to talk about the beer. She couldn't find other beers for us. So oh. I, I heard that there was a new collab between Goose and the Bulls yeah, yeah, yeah. that they were going to, like, unveil at Bulls Fest. Yes. I was looking forward to yeah, that. Yeah, I did hear that. Are yes. you saying that you did not find those? Yes. Emma? I Okay. Well, after after we talk after we talk to Bulls GM Mark Eversley, then we can go on our quest to find the new Bulls uh, Goose crossover beer. Yes, the crossover beer. But in the meantime, between time, there's plenty of Goose Island for you to enjoy. Plenty at your leisure, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Official sponsor of CHGO Bulls. We roll like that. But so many things to select from the Goose IPA, the six-time medal winner at the Great American Beer Fest. If you never been to a beer festival, you should go. I've got stories. Tropical Beer Hug, or as I like to call it, the Herb Lawrence. 9.9% .9 alcohol content, but it is dangerously easy to drink. Herb has proved this. This is true. 312 Wheat Ale. That is definitely the classic right there. And of course, the Mad Big Day favorite, the Full Pocket Pilsner, y'all. Oh, you know it. The everyday beer is what the brewers are drinking and what the people who drink what the brewers are drinking are also drinking. So, once you want to do is grab that ultra fresh beer at the Goose Island Original Brew House on Clybourne Avenue in Lincoln Park, or head on over to the Tap Room on Fulton Street in West Town, because it's the Goose Island Beer Company, y'all. It's Chicago's beer, the true taste of Chicago. True taste of Chicago. True With taste. How hot it is today? Like, I get it, it's August, but like, chill, Chicago. There is nothing that sounds more refreshing right now mm. than an ice cold goose. Mm. Uh, do you think that Emma's going to find them between now and when we're done talking with Mark? Do I think so? Yeah, I do. I have faith in her. I have yes, faith. I have faith, faith yeah. in her. We all have she's faith. She's been on point. She has all been on point handling B.I. since she's been up in here. So I expect her to get on down and find this, man. I love how much faith you have in people. Thank you very much, man. It's you very know? inspiring. I believe in people, bro. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? It's, hey, I believe in them, man. Until I don't. Until <laughs> you don't. Um, but I believe. One of my favorite things to do on a beautiful Chicago summer day is elevate my summer with the fine variety of products from Sunnyside Cannabis Dispensary. Ooh, your elevate. home for judgment-free cannabis shopping, a place where all kinds of visitors are welcome to explore, discover, and purchase a wide array of their high-quality products. Sunnyside has everything you need to elevate your summer, and summer is still going. We got time left, so stop on by Sunnyside. It's your one-stop shop for all your cannabis needs. They also offer easy online ordering mm -hmm. and then in-store pickup. Type any type on your computer or your phone on that website, sunnyside.shop. Swing by the store. Carry on your merry way to your next errand. When you're way. done with those errands, yeah. enjoy those Sunnyside products. Elevate your summer, whether it's today, whether it's tomorrow, whenever. They've got flour for you old school 
cannabis uh, imbibers like myself. They've got tinctures, imbibers. they've got vapes and vape rechargeable, all that jazz. They also have so many delicious edibles, a yes. variety of edibles. Try the Good News Orange Flavored Gummies. Try they them. are my personal favorites. I actually just ran out of my uh, most recent tin, so I got I to gotta go restock. Chateau. When you are stocking or restocking, here's what you do. Chateau. Through the end of the month, through the end of this month of August, head to sunnyside.shop. Yeah. Use that promo code CHGO25 at checkout to get 25% off your yeah. total order. I like it. One use per customer, not stackable with their other promotions, but it's not only for new customers and first-time customers. Anyone and everyone yeah. can use that promo code of ours, yeah. CHGO25, when you're checking out at sunnyside.shop. Pick up everything you need to elevate your summer. <laughs> Must be 21 and over or an Illinois Med card holder. Ooh, Dave, you're 21 three. and over, aren't you? Yeah, I'm good, but are you all right, man? That was a lot of words I'm right great. there, bro. I'm so happy for you, man. I, I took a week off of I'm about to ads. say, I'm so happy for you, man. You look like you're just so happy to be saying things so happy, to people man. in front of a microphone. I was talking to a wall for a week, man. <laughs> the fact I told Will and Mark when I jumped on HP first thing he said. I was like, I, I was climbing up the walls. <laughs> I had no one to annoy or talk to. <laughs> and he know he likes to annoy me all, all the time. But That's it's okay. what I do. It's true. It's who he is. So I allow it to go. Don't judge me. I did that. What I just say? <laughs> <laughs> I allow you to be you, man. It's all right. So allow me to be me. <laughs> and tell you how I feel about it. How's the hunt for the Goose Islands, Emma? How's it going? No? No? All right. Not going well. well. She don't know how it's a thing. It's all right. It's all right. I'm a fine. My belief in you has not swayed. I still it believe in you looking. so much. That's his way of saying keep looking. <laughs> <laughs> My way of saying keep looking is keep looking. <laughs> I was just literally saying. I was just do not that out disappoint to him. <laughs> I believe in you, Emma. Don't even worry about that. I probably ain't got nothing below. You don't want to deal uh, with a cranky, hot, thirsty peck. That's just like not. Wait a minute. No. Got something different from the regular cranky peck that we deal with? On yeah, the and basis? hot and thirsty. No, it's no different. You always either. <laughs> it's you. You should be yelling and stuff, man. Gentlemen, do, do you not no remember goose? that I, <laughs> What's up, boy? I brought some from you did. the office? Right. Do, does that not count? Do I no, give you credit I, for that? I give you so much credit. Yeah, I mean, you brought it from the office. Because I enjoyed a, a yeah. goose IPA already while we yeah. were setting up. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to crack into one of those 24 on 6.8 percenters before yeah. talking to Bulls GM Mark Everson. <laughs> I want to idea. maintain my sobriety, talk call. to Mark, and then drink a tall boy of 15, 7 percent beer. 20 more minutes. Is that, is that okay, yeah. Lawrence, or are you judging me for That'll that? That'll work. So he's saying That'll he wants work. to drink a beer is what he's saying. That's all I heard. I can't wait to drink a beer. That's all I heard right have there. A beer. That's all. You going to have one with us, Lawrence? You going to yeah, do it with not? us? Yeah, why not? Okay, I think so. Got a vibe. I'm ready for and it. And shout out to you, man, because you have done a wonderful job setting this up, sir. Has that sun found you yet, or are you still flying? It's yeah. starting to creep in. I don't, starting uh, to creep in. As I get okay. the uh, camera on me again. I'm sorry. Yeah, when I camera Until on you me. do a show yeah, from the uh, from the stadium, stadium swim, swim at Circa Resort Casino <laughs> yeah. in Las Vegas well, you know. in the middle of July. Don't get him started about yeah. how he did not get yeah. invited. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thanks guess, a lot, Matt. Good guess job. Guess where I just yeah, came man. from? I just came mm -hmm. from outside of Indianapolis, so <laughs> that's not great. Which man, is Y'all Airbnb had a fireplace. I don't want to hit this, though. I Yeah, I don't want to hit this. Also not great is that the camera just went out, so let's just pause. <laughs> Pause for station Pause. identification. Pause. Speaking of it being hot. <laughs> Shut camera it just down. Out. Camera shut yeah, down. Yeah, let's see what's All right. going on. Well, Take we'll, your time with it. We'll Take pause and hopefully get that camera back up, we'll and then back. Mark will get here. Oh. Rolling along here, CHGO Bulls coming to you from day one of Bulls Fest outside the United Center. And our next guest is one we can't wait to talk to. He is the general manager of your Chicago Bulls, Mark Eversley. Mark, welcome to the program, Yay. man. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. All right, the hard-hitting question that I think everybody wants to know the answer to. <laughs> You versus AK, one on one. Who's winning? AK. AK. AK? Yeah. He's a pro player in Europe. You didn't even try to defend team. yourself. Yeah, <laughs> I'd rather try and beat him in golf. Ah, <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, well then, right. who's and winning at golf? Today, he still probably got me by a couple shots, but uh, you know. working on your game. Yeah, I'm working okay. on my game. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What's we'll your check again next summer? <laughs> What's your reception of this, man? Of Bulls Fest, man. How is this for you? It's cool, man. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my kids are here today. They're enjoying the festivities. You know, just to see people out here enjoying, you know, open and. You know, Doing combine testing, vertical, yeah. all that kind of stuff. It's cool. You know, dunk contest is going on right now. Yeah. Point contest is going on. So it's cool. This is a great environment. Yeah. I like it, man. There's uh, there's some Bulls legends participating in the combine part, right? 
do, do you have uh, like a, a horse you're running with as far as like you know who's winning the combine from between like Horace Grant, Nate Robinson, who's winning that combine? I think I'm taking Nate all day long. <laughs> that, that's where my money would go for sure. And I haven't seen him, but I know Nate, and I know he's probably still in great shape. So, yeah, mm, you know, that's he, true. He's real competitive. Yeah. So you know, foreign football player, obviously basketball player. I would take Nate. Yeah, I hear you on that, man. Yeah. Let me ask you, how excited are you, man, to, to get those guys like Food, Kobe, and Ayo back signed and back coming for this uh, next season? Real excited. Um, you know, obviously getting back Vooch was really important, probably the number one um, thing that we had on our list. You know, there's just not a lot of starting centers in the NBA. And, you know, Vooch brings, you know, some special things to the table in terms of stretching the floor. Um, you know, he's a plus wingspan. You know, he's not the greatest uh, rim protector in the world, but he takes up a lot of space. Mm -hmm. So, you know, bringing back Kobe, who I think is, he's on a path um, to be a really, really solid key contributor in the NBA. Um, he had a terrific year last year. He finished the year incredibly well. Um, Io's a local kid, obviously, you know, second round pick, and he's still got that chip on the shoulder and excited to bring him back as well. You just mentioned the local kid. We just had a chance to talk with Javon. Uh, very excited to have him and Tori Craig in the mix. Uh, how do you think those guys help the Vooch, Damar, and Zach trio and just kind of like elevate this group? You know, we talked a lot about three-point shooting at the end of the year and how we wanted to address it. We talked about having a defensive identity, and I think both of those guys bring those two things to the table. Yeah. Um, you know, whether they're going to... What, kind, what their minutes look like in terms of playing with those guys. When they're on the floor with those three, we envision the team having a lot of success. So I think, again, defensive versatility, three-point shooting, bringing an element of toughness and grit, defensive-minded players. I think both of those guys check a lot of those boxes. Mm. Bringing in uh, the rookie, uh, Julian Phillips, you guys drafted, man. Like, What did you guys see that you were like, okay, we've got to go get this guy right here? He's your typical 6'8 wing profile that we like. He's an athlete. He's long. Uh, he's got a pretty good stroke. It's going to need a little bit of tweaking to it. Um, you know, we're not expecting a tremendous amount from Julian this year. Right. But as we project him out, you know, he's a piece that we want to grow within our program. We're really excited about it. Yeah, man. Your, uh, your background is pretty interesting as far as someone who works in, in an NBA front office, having worked for Nike for a good long while. What was the transition like working for a company that, you know, makes partnerships and sells basketball equipment to basketball players and basketball fans to then trying to, to build uh, within an organization? What was that transition like? So when I was at Nike, a lot of my um, – you know, my focus is really building relationships with our athletes and eventually getting them to sign endorsement deals and wear our product. You know, my career has been rooted in relationships. Mm -hmm. I think when I, the transition to move from Nike to the front office, it's still rooted in relationships. So when we went and signed DeMar DeRozan three years ago, it was because I had a relationship with him. I knew him as a basketball player. I knew him as a family man. So I was able to connect with him on a different level, I think, than others may have been able to. Um, so it's really rooted in relationships. And, you know, I think I know for a fact Nico Harrison worked at Nike. We worked together. He's now the GM in Dallas. And he's taken a lot of those same traits and applied them to the Mavericks. Little did you know you'd also be signing DR DeRozan to help you guys uh, <laughs> win the play-in game. But, um, did we mess that up? Should not we, at all. No, I mean, should we have flown her to, to Miami? Yeah, what was the story? Yeah. Did she have yeah. school the next day for the Miami game? I mean, Mar was not about it, man. He's like, he's got to go home. <laughs> Too much spotlight. Being a good dad, man. Good dad. Also, I feel like the Toronto fans still mostly love DeMar and shower him with love. Yeah, he sure. fans are something else. I didn't know if we wanted to subject her to that. No, yeah, seriously. I agree, I agree. <laughs> well, let me ask you this, man, because this is why I'm here. I have to ask you this question. So people know me to be annoyingly positive. I'm an annoyingly positive person. who I am. So I wanted to create a position in the Bulls front office for myself. <laughs> and I call it the, the positive affirmation liaison. See, what I want to do is I just want to sit behind the bench where the players are and just yell positivity at them the entire game. I did that last time we saw Patrick Williams. You're sitting in right behind Adam and Stacey for Patrick a game. Patrick Williams was like, who is this person yelling these nice things at me? I want to know, can, can I apply for that position even though I know it doesn't exist? Can I apply for that position? You can absolutely apply for it. Is there a doctorate in this? Yes, I will. 
will make one up. I promise you. I will print it Lewis out at University. Kinko's. That's right. <laughs> Lewis University. That's He's right. He's got plenty of qualifications, Mark. I will do this. No, man. I love it. I love it. You know, it's you know, we talk about the physical aspects of the game. We also talk a lot about the mental aspects of the game. You know, we talk a lot about self-talk. Yeah. And, you know, going into situations where, you know, you may not feel the outcome is what you want it to be. But if you're positive about it, you're more likely to have a, a positive outcome than not. Yes, so sir. there may be a role for you. Come on with it, Mark. You <laughs> heard it here, y'all. Like this. You heard Don't it here. Don't tease me like this. Don't do this. <laughs> if, you, if you let him in, he's not leaving. Oh, <laughs> never. <laughs> never, dog. Just a pillow is all I need. You bringing anybody with you? <laughs> no, just me. Just, just you. No, just me. No, just he's super. He's, he's really a one-man show. just me. You know what I mean? I let, I, I'm, I'm we'll not annoyingly positive all the time. No, he's not. He probably not want me around. This is very, very true, man. We just want to have that right. But you I'll mention bet. the, ahead, the sorry, transition from, from Nike to now the front office and those relationships really helping you in your job. Has there been any surprises or challenges along the way or maybe something that you've really enjoyed about this new position as GM that you weren't really expecting to? It's a good question. Um, you know, every year I say to myself, I'm not going to live and die by the losses. I'm just not. Been in this thing of way too long. I know that you got to kind of be even killed throughout the whole year, but I can tell you guys, when we lose games, it hurts. Yeah. And we yeah. feel it. You know, we lose a game here and we walk across the street to the Advocate Center. Mm -hmm. We don't leave till 12 o'clock, 1230, because we're watching the game again. And I never thought going into this, it was like that deep, but it is. We live and die by every win, by every loss. Mm -hmm. when we beat Toronto. We were way up here in the mm -hmm. playing game. We were up five with a couple minutes to go. I was thinking about, man, we're in. Mm -hmm. And then we lose. It takes a long time to get over that. Yeah. Really, it takes yeah. a long time. So what that does is it fuels us to work that much harder, to put a plan together, shooting, defense, versatility, and then execute against that. And I think we've done a pretty good job to date in building out our roster, and we feel we, we're going to put – a really competitive group back on the floor this year. Yeah, yeah. What the, uh, I'm just curious, uh, as an individual, before we got the full schedule drop earlier this week, and shout out to the Bulls content team, that oh schedule drop was oh, so yeah. awesome. It's amazing, man. All of us who remember those old school video yes. games. <laughs> um, but before that, we got the in-season tournament game schedules. What do you think about this new idea that the NBA is rolling out this season? A lot of NBA fans were skeptical about the whole play-in tournament thing. Mm -hmm. That's been going a few years now. Now most everybody seems to be on board and enjoying it. It adds more drama and excitement to the end of the season. What do you make of this trying to bring some of the, the Euro soccer element of something to play for in the middle of the season before the real playoffs? I actually love the idea. Um, you know, it's really on us now as a front office and coaching staff to really educate our players on what it all means mm -hmm. and how it can impact our season. Um, anytime you can create an environment, a more co competitive environment, on you know just another game in November, I think it's a good thing. As long as the players buy in, and I think they will, because there's incentives behind this, I think the product will improve for not only the fans, um, but for you guys, for us as a front office, um, the players. It's another thing to care about. I'm really excited about it, and I think it's a really, really great thing that the NBA is done. Mm. So bringing out, you got Damar, you got Zach, you know, Pat, you got Vooch back, we just talked about. What What is the goal uh, for you going into next season for the organization? I think we want to remain competitive. I think we want to get into that top seed and really compete. You know, the playing game was fun last year, but it's nerve-wracking. <laughs> I don't want to go through it again. <laughs> so, um, you know, I think from the top of the East to the bottom of the East, there's – there's parity and I feel mm. you know on any given night we can compete with the best teams in the NBA mm. and you know that's going to be the challenge for this group um, starting here in a couple months mm. uh, we'll let you go in a minute I know the dunk contest is getting ready to get started we were just curious any talent that you've scouted around here you know we saw a 12 year old just repeated as a three point champion <laughs> at Bulls Fest nice. um, yeah are you doing some scouting here is that part of the, today's uh, <laughs> to do list I think we're always scouting <laughs> we never turn off scouting never yeah, sleeps no, scouting never sleeps well, well said. <laughs> most importantly I think Dave you wanted to know if you guys get yeah. into a bind later on on this season, obviously knock on wood. We hope you don't. If you need a 10-day contract or two, mm -hmm. we're available. Yeah. Just without having scouted any of our games at all, which one of us would you sign to a 10-day contract? Now, now, let me say this. Let me make my point here. Here's what I can give you. I'm big, and I'll give you six fouls. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you that. It's hard to compete with that. Will, I need some help. <laughs> 
<laughs> Honestly, you probably want his jump shot. If you want shooting, that's about all I can give you. That's about all I can give you. I go with my shooter here. Hey, not mad at you. It's if the right add, answer. If you add answer. more three-point shooting, I'm not going to be upset about that. I just I'll applied to sit on the bench. <laughs> so, yes, this is the correct answer right you're, here. You're doing that and your positive affirmation liaison mm-hmm. role? No, positive Sign- affirmation only. Okay. That's it. I'm going to do that. You. you signed Will. I'll yell it at him all day long, <laughs> and it will be awesome. Yes. Uh, Mark, we will let you get back to it, man. Thank you so much for spending Thanks, some of your time man. with us Thanks here so today. much for joining us. Bulls General Manager Mark Appreciate Eversley. You. Thank you. Appreciate Mark, it, man. Thank slay. you for doing this for Bulls fans. By the and, way, uh, I love your gear. Oh, oh thank well, you, man. Appreciate it. We Appreciate got to get you a shirt. Really nice. got to get <laughs> you Make a shirt, stickers. Man. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Enjoy the rest of Bulls Fest. Good luck this season. We appreciate thank the time. Thanks again, Mark. Mark Eversley. Mark. Hanging out with us here at CHGO Bulls Fest. We're going to go get up and talk to y'all, our fellow Bulls fans. Why not? That's it. That's our last interview for the day. Thanks for tuning in. We will see you next time on CHGO Bulls. In the meantime, Will, Will underscore Gottlieb. He's the GOAT. Mm-hmm. Big Dave Bow, BWL Sports on Bulls underscore Peck. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Mark. We are CHGO underscore Bulls. Shout out to everybody on our CHGO crew who helped us out today. Law our executive producer. Shout out to also Tucker from Bulls TV. Yeah. Backup Cam in case our Cam overheated again. Casey and Emma, our social media extraordinaires. Shout out also to our got heels on. Bulls Central hanging out with us. <laughs> That's it. We're going to go get out, fraternize with y'all, Bulls fans. Bulls Fest. See you next time. <laughs>